Welcome back to Writing Wednesday. So we are on episode three of our lovely little series of writing for the wedding. Little shameless promotion here going on. But the wedding will be coming out eventually soon once I have it written, edited, and okay, I'm really looked shit over. Talk. And <laughs> probably still have a few errors in it, but we're we'll gonna try, try to release it soon okay. on Amazon. I'm hoping this year. Because i am kind of got a goal for myself to publish at least three this year. Of course, it's already March, so that goal is not going well. <laughs> Anyhow, we have the wedding, and we are currently in the scene where we were connecting between two chapters and we're trying to do a fill-in. So we, last time, went over some of the lovely things that we wanted to happen in this chapter to get them from point A to point B. And one of those is that they're all having dinner together. We're going to not mention Brittany and the fact that she's not there. We want to introduce his bride, Adriana, which we have kind of done. We want to get the aunts away to tea. We want to get the ladies away to their fabulous little dress emergency with Kelly, which will happen in the next chapter. And also we want to get to the more interesting point which is where we talk about what's going on in the family businesses because there is an FBI investigation going on. And it's all about drugs and laundering money and, spoiler alert, if you haven't seen any of, or rather read, any of the other books. But uh, yes, they're being investigated by the FBI and so we want kind of a status update of what is actually going on. Now, one thing that I did not plan on doing this chapter, which my character Parker just decided that he had to talk about, was um, about his family. So he's he's actually um, gotten to the point where he's discussed that, yes, James is the one who actually told everybody. Um, well, no, James didn't tell everybody. My apologies. Let me back that up. He ratted out the family to the FBI. He turned them in. He basically went to the FBI to clear his own conscience to save his own chain of businesses and thus his son's businesses and everybody else no loyalty <laughs> so yeah that that was pretty bad so Parker explained that which I thought was pertinent to the chapter and then Parker went off on a little tangent which actually I think works well in the chapter and so I will keep it and that's where he's talking about his own relationship to his father so we know in convincing him that Parker is not the son of James. So he's actually the son of Oscar through an indiscretion of Mary's while James was away. And we know that some of the characters, being Gabe, understands that this has happened. But we weren't sure for absolutely certain that Parker knew it. But apparently Parker knows all about it. And he has told me thus. So this is kind of his reaction about what is going on. So, I mean, he he has um, basically stated kind of how his childhood is. And that how, as a kid, Parker had always been confused and hurt by his father's attitude. Gabe was the favorite child. Spending time with... Oh, sorry, spending time being groomed for the position of heir. Parker was tolerated with an undercurrent of constant resentment and Marshall pretty much ignored. Um, when he was a teenager, Parker had decided that there was no way to please the old man and did whatever he wanted within reason of not disappointing his mother. Dottie and his brothers had been the ones that Parker enjoyed a good relationship with. When he found out in college he had a knack for math, organization, science, Parker had looked over what Gabe was doing and realized he would be good at it. Then it became a point of doing just as well as Gabe in the family business, even if Parker hadn't been the one trained for it by their dad. And it's kind of a bit of like sibling rivalry, but also a stick it to a man thing. Because, quite frankly, he was annoyed at his father. Because his father was always annoyed by him. And then the truth had hit him. It wasn't like anyone in the family had outright told him. It was all the little things Parker had discovered along the way. The snubs from Mary, the extra attention from Oscar. So Mary and Oscar are his aunt and uncle. Oscar is his true father, and Mary would not be impressed. <laughs> she is the type of woman who is 
very what's prim and proper and not really not really a nice lady let's put it that way um she's very much set in her ways and everybody should fall into line <laughs> that is our lovely mary and it wasn't like anyone in the family had outright told him it was all the little things that parker discovered along the way i'm sorry i'm repeating myself the snubs from mary the extra attention from oscar the fact his father had been traveling about the time parker should have been conceived he liked to surf as did garrett and nate people often commented on how nate and parker looked so much alike which is funny because people also comment on how gabe and garrett look alike but there's no crossover there they are just cousins um so i mean they are cousins they're in the same family they should look alike so this is kind of his how his childhood was and i didn't expect to put this in the scene i had no um it wasn't in my outline but parker just started talking and it became a little bit of a filler but i think it's important background just to know what kind of person he is and i would expect him to be a better father than his own father because he has the self-awareness to realize what's going on and when i say father i do mean james because that is the man who raised him his uncle oscar did not raise him and had very little to do with his childhood other than being an uncle figure so i mean dotty dotty was a great mom in my opinion she did kind of fail her kids in some ways because she could have taken james to task a few more times and kind of told him to be a better father but then again there was this big indiscretion holding over top of her head and that also adds to a dynamic of her and james's relationship right because while james could forgive her he could not forgive parker yeah. Ooh, the family drama right so this is all part of parker's background and makeup and i think it lends some depths and insight into what type of person that he is i mean he's it just makes it more interesting and when you go into those sort of background details it really helps now we're supposed to be doing more um show rather than tell but this is background and background has to be told it's one of those things that you can't get away from and also i feel like characters need a source of pain and a source of contention to deal with to create a really good character arc so that they struggle with something and they can kind of overcome it so to speak in this case he's never gonna really overcome it because nobody talks about it it's just the secret that the family has um, not everybody in the family knows about it some do most don't and they just they don't bring it up it's it's part of their lives and james would have been horrified had anybody else outside of his little group knew about it so obviously oscar knows about it mary knows about it she's not stupid she might be snotty but she's not stupid dotty obviously knows about it and then um gabe parker and marshall all know about it marshall may or may not know about it maybe he doesn't he might suspect something he might wonder something but i don't know whether he does know about it or not gabe knows about it gabe's not stupid so and i'm not saying marshall's stupid i'm just saying marshall is the youngest and a little bit more insulated from certain things he's had he's had a better life <laughs> in some ways because he was pretty much a little bit ignored by his father i'm pretty sure he didn't appreciate that but at the same point he can go on with his life and do what he will and he's a much confident young man because of it so parker has that sort of background angst to him and it's good that this has come out because i think it makes him a more relatable character where he's like this is going on and it's it's uh something that's dutifully ignored and the one time that he did try to do anything about it it didn't go over well so he's just come to accept the fact and he's also come to the fact except the fact that no one in the family said the truth out loud it's like they could keep pretending as long as no one said a word about it it was interesting how the ramsley family had started to include some of his uncle david's illegitimate children into the family fold 
yet everyone ignored Parker's roots. So that is definitely a dynamic where it's kind of, should he resent them? Should he just accept it? Should he just look at it and go, huh, slightly different situation. But at the same point, like, it's it's hidden under the rug, so to speak. In a very open family fashion. <laughs> and I think a lot of families have those types of secrets. Where they're like, no, no, we're not going to talk about it. We're just going to pretend that this secret does not exist whatsoever. Even though it's there. It's the elephant in the room, but everybody ignores it and pretends it's part of the decor. So that's that's part of Parker's life. So at this point, he's going on to, you know, does it really matter? He supposed it didn't. Either way, he was in the family a part of the family business, and let's put it this way, the business that he actually loves. He loves the hospital business. He loves what he does. He has a passion for it. Would he have that same in the hotel business? Maybe, maybe not. Over here, he feels like he's making a difference. So it's just the way it is. And while he wishes things were different with his father, he also recognizes that they never will be. Because he and James can't get past this because James won't. He just won't. And James is going to pass away eventually soon and maybe sooner than we all think since i have the hand of somebody else at play in the background of all of this hint hint spoiler alert <laughs> so uh that's never going to be resolved and parker's gonna have to take that and uh a bit of a sad feeling about it but i think that he has learned from the experience and hopefully he'll be a better husband and father because of it so, we're going to go through his background, which was a bit of a surprise. And then we're going to get the ladies off for tea. And actually, we're just trying to get through dinner at this point. Which is funny, because I haven't really overly said, yes, we're having dinner, you know. I just put a couple hints in there. So I might have to edit again in the background and put a little few more hints of what's going on. So you can see underneath... Uh, my typing, I have kind of where I want to go in this chapter and outline just a little quick, hey, these things need to be mentioned, this is where we should go, this needs to happen before we hit the next chapter. So right now we're trying to figure out how to get through these and connect the dots. It's one of the fun things that happens when writing. We don't always know where everything's going, and our characters don't always cooperate. So, like in this case, which, I mean, it was a moon. It worked out very well. He started telling me a lot more background, and I'm like, uh, we don't need to talk about background. We were getting from point A to point B, but he insisted. So I write it out, and then I see if it's useful or not, and decide whether or not to delete it or not. Um, in a lot of cases, I find that my writing instincts work well. So I don't end up deleting much just because this is where the character needed to go. And I feel that it's very necessary sometimes to listen to your characters. And if you try to ignore your characters, you will find as a writer that it just doesn't work. They'll balk. They won't speak to you. They'll be like, nope, nope, this has to come out first. Even if it doesn't seem relevant, it might be relevant later. And so you can usually set some scenes to the side and then decide whether or not to include them. And sometimes things aren't working because you're trying to force them into something that doesn't suit the character's characteristics. So that's a funny way to say it, but it's true. So now he's talking to Marshall, which is important because we all wanted to... Um, I did have it earlier that they were teasing Marshall about, you know, Sorry, teasing, not teasing, but, you know, commenting on the fact that Marshall and his bride are absent at the uh, dinner. I don't think it's really a rehearsal dinner, although I have no idea when the rehearsal happened. Maybe it did. Maybe I just ignored it. Maybe I'll have to put that in. See, revising and editing, that's a good idea. That's always a good idea. This, again, is just a very, very rough draft of everything. You are seeing me write it as I am doing it, you know, right in front of you live. And then I basically narrate the little caption afterward. I did have to cut a couple places because some, uh, if you'll notice editing, it's because 
a couple of Outlook messages popped up, and those are confidential because those are involving my work life. They're just separate from my writing life. So those are gone. I didn't do much writing in the meanwhile while those messages were up. Anyhow, so Parker has chit-chatted to Dear Marshall again, who is not going to make it to dinner. He's going to make it afterward and chit-chat to everybody, but I don't think Marshall really has a care in the world, honestly. He's not as involved or in-depth with the investigations going on through the FBI because, number one, Marshall is mostly, well, I'd say he spends half his time on the board of the Ramsley Hospital Medical Committee. Um, and the other half of the time, he's a general surgeon. And that's what he really enjoys doing, and he does draw some salary from it. So he is, he's not under investigation, because as we said earlier, the FBI is not investigating the, um, the hospital chain because they've already admitted their culpability, and basically they're going to have to pay a fine, and that's it because James already turned evidence on the other ones. So that is the, the lovely news there. Um, so Marshall really doesn't have a care in the world at the moment. He's going to come in, swoop in partly through the evening, say hi to everybody, and he's not worried about the investigations on how it affects him. He is worried about how it affects the other people. I mean, he has some compassion for everybody else. But it's going to be very interesting because, quite frankly, how is Gabe and Parker going to explain to everybody else that while all of their um, businesses are under FBI scrutiny, let's just say they aren't. So their accounts are not frozen. They're completely able to do business, they have to downplay that fact. And they can say that they're under scrutiny because, you know, they are going to get levied a fine, but they're not under the same sort of scrutiny that the other businesses are because the FBI, especially Agent Kepler, our favorite um, bad guy, but not bad guy, because he's just doing his job. He just does it in the meanest way possible. <laughs> so Agent Kepler is going to continue to bother all of these people, and he will make an appearance he actually shows up in the next chapter um, as a flashback. And then he's going to come to the hotel to bother everybody because his investigation has widened. And then Mr. Agent Kepler is going to have a surprise later in the book, which he's really not going to be happy with. And uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be a bit of a game changer in some ways. Because somebody in the background was hoping things would turn out a little bit differently. However, it is unfortunate, but uh, things are not always what they seem. So, uh, do 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 do. All right, Dottie is disappointed that Marshall is not showing up for dinner. She expects to chit chat to him later, and then we have. Adriana, our lovely, sweet little foreign bride, who is asking her soon-to-be husband if it would be okay for her to go with the other ladies tonight, because I needed her to be over there. Not that she has too big a role of a play, but I like to uh, make sure that the main characters are mentioned when things are going on. So she will be in the next chapter, not doing too much, but a little bit. And so I needed to get her into the room with Elle and all the others. Although that is an interesting complication that I didn't really think of. Ho ho ho! Now I'm going to have to write a note to myself because Adriana is also in the room. I mean... No, he would know. He would know because they had her fertility checked and all that. So they would know that she's not pregnant. So one of the uh, lovely little spoiler alerts to this book that I sent out with a newsletter long ago when I still had mail or light doing my newsletters was that um, one of the ladies is pregnant. 
and the guys have found the fabulous pregnancy kit, which is a positive, of course, because, yes. And they're trying to figure out who it is. Some of the guys are like, nope, not us. But, uh, yes, my little mind just went, oh, let's pretend for a moment it might be Adriana's. But no, Parker wouldn't be worried because, strangely enough, he did have, well, not strangely, but he did have her tested and he had himself tested for fertility because, according to James's little ultimatum, they have to get married within the month, get pregnant within the year, and not divorce for five years minimum in order to gain their inheritance. And Parker enjoys what he does, so he's going to play by the rules, because even though it's very draconian, it is legal, apparently, for the purposes of my fictional uh, series. Anyway, uh, in real life, it might be a totally different story, but that's why this is fiction. So, um, she is going with the other ladies. Parker's turned a little deaf. Mainly, he's just wasn't paying attention. Poor guy. So he asked her to repeat, and she's going to go get to know the other ladies better. And sometimes it takes me a minute to find a word, because my brain just goes, I don't know what word I'm looking for. And the way I phrased it is still not how I want it to be phrased, but it will do for now. And so in that case, I just put a couple of large X's in if I'm missing a word. And that way, it holds the space while I can keep going on, because sometimes it takes me a few hours to find the word that I'm looking for. Last video... It was chaperone. Yes, chaperone. I know. Couldn't find the word for the life of me. It took me probably about a half hour, and that's when I was narrating. I finally found the word. I'm like, chaperone! That's the word I'm looking for. So yes, sometimes we have brain farts. It happens. If that's the case, and you're on a roll, and you're getting stumped by a word, I just throw in XXX, and then I keep going on. And eventually, I'll come back to that word, and I'll put something in. And it might be the perfect word. It might not. We don't know. And sometimes I don't always know how to spell things, whether it has two L's or not. And that's why that little box popped up, because the fabulous thing about Microsoft Word and is it does a lot of helping for you. Sometimes it can really screw things up, too, but uh, a lot of times it's okay for spelling and a few other things. Not Canadian spelling. It doesn't always recognize that. <laughs> So, of course, Parker's going to give his permission. He's used to people kind of doing their thing. He's kind of surprised that he has to be asked permission. But she is a very conservative person. And she will ask permission. And eventually, she's going to um, find her feet, shall we say. Find her confidence. She will get there. It might take a book or two. But uh, I feel Adriana will be more than a match for him once she gets her confidence. And I think... Parker will soften and be a better husband for her as well. So we got that taken care of. Kelly's dress emergency is somewhat mentioned. That they're all going up to the room together, which is great. And then we're going to get the guys alone so they can chit chat, which is probably going to be another video. No, it is going to be another video because quite frankly, we are reaching the end of the time limit for this one. I record about 30 minutes at a time, and then I have to kind of edit out a little bit because of those little pop-up messages. So you're probably going to have about 27 minutes of actual video time, but it's nice to have delved into this, and I think it was very character building, and it helps to get from point A to point B, and it's a continuation of last time. So next time we will probably talk about what the guys are doing and um, what's going on with their finances, where they are, who's doing okay, who needs some assistance, um, you know, if how long the investigation may or may not go, what the lawyers say, are they going to drive them into bankruptcy before they actually get anywhere with the investigations? Are they going to just be fined? Is anybody else going to face jail time? So I think that's a constant worry on some of the gentlemen's mind because they're heads of their company. Like Robert, he retired. So Dylan was head of, well, no, he wasn't quite retired, but, you know, 
they're all kind of heading up their own section of the company. Everett was doing Europe. Not that he got very far. Dylan was doing the Western Divi Eastern Division? Whichever. And the other one was doing the Western Division. The other side. Um, which, again, maybe a plot hole that I fell down accidentally without thinking about because everything is supposed to be in some sort of geographical context, which I may have messed up. And that's what happens sometimes when you have a long series. It helps if you plot things, if you have family trees, if you actually know locations and things like that. So if you're thinking of doing a larger series of books, yeah, write these things down. Put them in one place so that you know and that you can um, reflect on that resource occasionally. Consult it and know where you're going. So, yeah. Yeah, kind of important. Like I said, get a who's who sheet or a family tree. Um, definitely know how the books kind of interspace with each other. Make some point form lists. Whatever you need to know what's going on in each and everybody's lives so that you can make it a little bit smoother. So... Parker is, um, yeah, he's coming toward a close at this point. So he doesn't often get the opportunity to hang out with everybody, and he's basically going to raise some of the questions of what's going on, and they're going to go to a little private room off the bar, because I don't think they want to be overheard by anybody, but I think they still want to chit-chat and be fairly comfortable, have drinks if they want to, and, uh, yeah, the guys are going to go talk shop. In the next writing Wednesday, I think that would be number four, and we can find out how far they think the investigation is going before we run into Mr. Agent. Well, I shouldn't say Mr., but Agent Kepler next next chapter, and uh, he wants some new answers regarding a few other things. So it's very interesting to see how the investigation has expanded it to his mind for what's going on. Anyhow, I hope you enjoyed our little writing Wednesday, and I hope that you will come back for the next one and see where they are going versus where we're from. I know, little spoiler alerts each and every week as to what's going on, but there are some scenes and some chapters that are not going to get make it into here because, quite frankly, they've already been written. We are, what, oh, 48,000 words in? Uh, normally I do around 50,000 for a book, but this one's going to be bigger because it's kind of like a three-in-one. I'm hoping that I don't have to do 100,000. I'm thinking quite might settle around 70, 80,000, but we'll see how it goes because we have a lot of ground to cover. Uh, it might, maybe it'll be in the 60s. Who knows? Who knows? Depends how it wraps up and how things go and how much um, detail I add into it. Because I'm not overly a detailed writer, but I know that a lot of people enjoy details in the background, so it's something that I'm going to try to add a little bit more to my writing. And uh, we'll see. See how that flows through. If it makes a little bit too cumbersome, too choppy. I don't know, the drama continues, right? Because this is... I think we're on chapter nine or ten here chapter nine i think i think so there's eight chapters of meeting your characters the mostly mains and then introducing other characters into it because for some reason everybody's out and about in this one well i guess because it's a wedding and then slowly on resolving and furthering our overall story, which is our investigation. And um, we're going to have to focus on a new villain because the old one's gone. I hope you enjoyed this video. And don't forget to like, subscribe, share, hit the bell in the corner so that you get notifications for future videos. And don't miss out on any other Writing Wednesdays. This is free for you to do and helps me with the algorithms, which helps my reach on YouTube. And so here is just a lovely little bonus video of Bean enjoying a swim. Happy reading. Don't forget, you can always find my books on Amazon.